Okay, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima a little bit. So if I go to the library and look at our apps, you're going to see our Machinima is here now. And let's go ahead and launch this. So what I'm going to do now is just show you around an NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima. Now, I'm not going to be going over every single button in here or settings, but I'll just show you some of the most common ones that I mess around with. So let's start with the top left corner. One of the common settings I use in here is the rendering settings. If I go right here, I'm going to click on the rendering setting, which is right here. But by default, it's probably not going to be there. So click on this. And now you're going to see this rendering uh, window right here. Now, additionally, I go sometimes in the create because here, this is where you're going to find all of your mesh. You want to create a cone or something like that. Additionally, you're going to see your flow effects in here. You're going to find some of the presets in here that you can use particles and then physic items right here. Now I'm gonna be going over some of these in a later tutorial, but again, this video is more just like an overview. Additionally, you can create cameras right here, but I'll show you another way how you can create cameras in Machinima. All right, so on the left side of things, you're gonna see some modes and select and move, pretty much your usual typical movement uh, buttons. If I kind of double click this, you're gonna see that's gonna to change to a prim. Here's your select. Also, you can use a keyboard Q if you want. QW again, this is similar to some of the software packages that we've used before and then rotate is E So control Z that again control Z as well um, Works in NVIDIA Omniverse, so that's good You got your scale you have your snap and you can change this again to the increments snap to face snap settings right here if you want to So nothing too fancy here and you have your play space Zero gravity, again, we'll kind of go over that later. Now, this wrench post estimator is kind of like a way that you can animate in uh, NVIDIA Omniverse, but to be honest, I haven't used this yet because what I've been doing is just using mocap or, you know, pre-made animations in here. So at the bottom right here, you're gonna see the sequencer timeline. You have some console commands, materials is gonna show you all the materials that's built in NVIDIA Omniverse. Now, this library is actually growing pretty nice you have some assets in here that they added again this is growing as well sometimes they add some trees and some grass in there pretty nice stuff need some leaves for skies are gonna be your HDRI environments again you can use other ones but these are the preset ones so let's go ahead and double click one of these all right so here we go if I click on alt and then left mouse click I can move around my environment like so Pretty nice. Okay, so for the samples, you're gonna see some sample projects. I am gonna be kind of showcasing one of these, the astronaut, because this looks really amazing. But if you wanna mess around with it and kind of just see if your GPU can take this, your RTX card, then you can download uh, one of these, just double click it and then see if you can do it. As far as testing go, I think flight had the most usage as far as GPU, but I could be wrong. All right, so moving on to the bottom right corner, this is where you're gonna find your content folder. Now remember we added the local host as far as the nucleus goes, so that's gonna go right here. So if I double click this, I am now gonna have access to NVIDIA's folder right here. Additionally, you have the users folder if you wanna store some stuff in there. I don't have anything in there right now. And I'll go ahead and go to localhost again, NVIDIA. And then you can find the demos in here as well. And you have your assets right here. You got audio face. You got some free characters in here as well from Relusion. You got Debra, you got Orc. So you have all that stuff. If you want to drag and drop this, you can just kind of drag and drop it to the scene. But that's pretty much how it works. You know, you find it in your asset and you just drag and drop it and that's going to load it up. I will go ahead and delete this cone. So we can kind of see Debra here. And that's going to load our materials here. It's pretty quick. Let's go back in here and just kind of move around. You got some samples. Yeah, the astronaut again, these are the same ones that you see right here, just in the folder format. Machinima samples, you have the robots that they have, the characters. You have a male and a female, which is really good. They look high quality. Yeah, Bannerlord, Ma Minecraft, and then you have Squad here that has your soldiers. All right, so that being said, let's talk about the folder kind of like makeup. The characters are obviously your skeletal meshes. You have props, and then stages is your environment. If you double click right here, the desert, we have this desert stage right here. So just kind of get you familiarized with the naming convention here. Okay, so let's move up to assets. 
There's a lot of stuff in here. Again, if you want some vegetation and stuff like that, you can find those here as well. Additionally, you can access your local drives right here. You got my CD, desktop documents. Sometimes I do save in my local drive. Um, I don't always save in my um, Nucleus server, but that's totally up to you. So moving on to the keyframer, this is probably one of my favorite tools in here. Remember I told you you can create a camera another way, and this is pretty much where you can create another camera. So I'll create one right here. And you're going to see right here in the top left corner, you're going to see that that changed to camera. So I'm going to click that and then we can select two. Well, I guess we have two cameras. We have this camera and we have this camera, right? So I'm going to the stage right here real quick so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. So we have this camera that has Debra and we can actually WASD our way around here. And then if you scroll mouse up and down, your mouse uh, sensitivity is going to go up as far as the speed. Okay, so we will kind of frame her like so. And then, again, one of the features they added recently is the autofocus button, which is amazing. So all you have to do is make sure you have your camera selected and just focus the person right here. And now she's gonna be in focus. And I'll turn that off. Make sure you turn that off as well. And I am gonna be going over the sequencer later, but this is more just like an overview, like I said. Okay, so here's our camera settings. And whenever you click something in the stage, it's going to show you pretty much the settings that you can change. All right. Now, as you can see, there's no depth of field because our f-stop is at zero. But if I turn this to one, you're now going to see that, that depth of field is now there. And I'll change this to zero and I'll press that. And now it's going to autofocus to her. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uncheck that. And let's go over some of the other settings that I use in here. All right. So I guess we'll move on to the top left since we already messed around in here. You can change your camera settings right here if you want to camera speed. But like I said, I showed you the, the uh, shortcuts You can change all this stuff. I don't really mess around in here too much. Additionally, right here is your render mode. If I click on this, you can now switch to path trace and you can see that that's going to change to path tracing. You can also use IRA photo reel, white mode, wireframe and shaded wireframe. All right, so that's shaded wireframe right there. And let's go switch to real time. It looks kind of cool. Right, so let's turn that off and let's go back to real time. Now, moving on to the right side. All right. Uh, in the right side, I already showed you the stage pretty much where everything is. In the environment, we have a light right here, which is our HDRI. Uh, additionally, if I click on the character right here, Deborah, and if I go down and then I click on Deborah again, you're going to see that there is some animation in there. Okay. I'm going to minimize that. And yes, the character does come with a camera, which is right here. All right. All right, so with that being said, I don't usually mess around with layer or time sample editor right now. I do change the settings around in the render settings. As far as the rendering goes, I'm just going to briefly go over this because I'm going to save this for another video. So you have a common tab, ray tracing and post processing. However, if you change this to uh, path trace, now you're going to have this path tracing right here. It's going to open up some new settings. So for now, I'll go to real time and then I'll go to common and this is just going to be called ray tracing. All right, so the last thing I'm going to go over before we end this episode is pretty much how you can render a scene or an image. Now to do that, I'm just going to go to my rendering and then I'll click on movie capture. And this is going to open my render settings. This is where you render out your scene or your image. So that pretty much wraps it up in this uh, video. I hope to see you all in the next one.